hey doc, what's the best diet? What's the best diet? Just tell me what to eat. This is a really common question that I get asked in clinic all the time. Probably the number one question asked by people who've been diagnosed with prediabetes is, hey doc, just tell me what to eat. You know, there's so much conflicting information that's out there. I'm confused. I don't understand. Just tell me what I should eat. Hey there, I am Dr. Topher Fox, endocrinologist in Superior, Colorado. And today we are going to talk a little bit about nutrition for prediabetes. Specifically, what can you do using nutrition to help prevent diabetes and ideally reverse prediabetes altogether? It can be done. Ideally, reverse prediabetes altogether. And I want to dive a little bit more into two studies two studies that I think really help shed light on this. Both studies were done by a researcher named Dr. Kevin Hall and his research group at the National Institutes of Health, and they were done in a really similar fashion. So I'm going to have the links up above or down below if you want to click over and read a little bit more about those studies yourself. But just to summarize, so first study, Cell Metabolism 2019, second one published in Nature Medicine just this year, 2021. They were done in a very similar fashion. In both studies, researchers brought 20 people into a research lab. They lived there for 28 days. So during that 28 days, they were shown food, they were given food and just told, hey, eat whatever you want. But inside those 28 days, basically there were two 14-day periods. So they got diet number one for 14 days and diet number two for 14 days. And in that first study, diet number one was a diet rich in ultra-processed foods. Ultra-processed foods. We'll talk about what those are, but essentially you could think of this as very similar to the standard American diet. And then diet number two emphasized minimally processed foods, whole foods, minimally processed foods. And the key take home pieces from that first study. So in both studies, people were about 31, 32 years old on average, a little bit overweight, body mass index or BMI about 27 or 28. And in that first study, what they found is when folks ate the ultra processed diet, they consumed almost 600 calories more per day and their body weight tended to drift up by about a pound per week where when they were on the minimally processed diet, they uh, maintained their weight fairly stable. Other metabolic parameters also got worse on the ultra-processed diet, so things like their blood cholesterol and lipids or their blood sugar levels, but body weight increased during that time. And if we look at those extra 600 calories, it was split about equal more carbohydrates and more fat that they eat. They actually didn't eat more protein. Now contrast that with the second study. And in that second study, diet number one and diet number two both emphasized minimally processed foods. But in the diet number one, it was an animal-based ketogenic diet. And diet number two was a plant-based uh, plant uh, vegetarian uh, diet, whole food diet. And in that study, they found that people in both groups, their metabolic parameters actually got healthier there were some subtle differences between them. People actually consumed fewer calories ultimately in the plant-based group, but their weight came down in both groups. Blood sugar was a little better in the ketogenic uh, group. They actually lost a little bit more weight in the ketogenic group, but they actually lost more fat in the plant-based group. But again, I think key take-home point was people in both groups, the metabolic parameters were improving where remember in study number one, the metabolic parameters were worsening on that ultra processed uh, heavy diet. So here's the take home point. Here's really what I want you to get from this training today is that it really looks to be food quality that reigns supreme when it comes to how do we choose which foods to emphasize. We know that the standard American diet is rich in ultra processed or highly processed foods. This is going to be the stuff in the center of the grocery store, and it's going to be rich in three ingredients, refined grains, added sugars, and commercial oils. And so anything that we can do to emphasize bringing those three ingredients down to limit or avoid foods that have those three ingredients and to emphasize vegetables, fruits, whole grains, lean proteins, quality fats is going to improve the quality of your nutrition. So we want to 
elevate food quality. That's actually step number three from our five-step program to build a sustainable, healthy eating plan that will work for you. We want to elevate food quality. So my question for you would be, hey, what do you like to eat? What kind of foods do you enjoy? If you looked at different programs, right? We think about Mediterranean or paleo or keto or whole food plant-based vegan. All of these are going to emphasize, they're all going to emphasize foods of high quality. So how do you think you want to eat? How do you think your family wants to eat? What looks sustainable for you? And let's start with that. And let's try to adapt that over time if you find there are things that are hard or areas where you struggle. So key take home point is we want to elevate food quality. And there's lots of different ways, lots of different ways that that can be done. We just want to find the one that's going to be sustainable for you and sustainable for your family or the people that you live with. So really interesting studies from Dr. Kevin Hall. As I get ready to wrap up, I just want to invite those of you, in particular women 50 plus who've been diagnosed with prediabetes, we have a training program that helps people just like you to do two things, to know what the right thing is to do, nutrition, exercise, and sleep, and to actually follow through consistently on your good intentions to do those things. You know, it's interesting this last week I had, uh, I heard from three of our current members, all of whom had lost 25 plus pounds, two of whom had actually reversed prediabetes, and the third one was really, really close. But really important to me is all of them had this one thing in common, which is they all said, you know, before this program, I felt like there was just no way for me to get success. Success was not going to be there for me. I was just destined to be in this body, this body that had been diagnosed with prediabetes or wasn't healthy. And there was just no path forward for me to be able to get the results that I wanted. And all three of them had grown in confidence and now saw that this was something that they could do, that it was going to be sustainable for them. And they were all highly motivated to continue to do the right thing and to be there uh, in their world for their family, their friends, their business, their career, to be there in a powerful way so that they could be the hero in their own life. So I just invite you, if that sounds anything like you, to join our community, our membership program, Reversing Prediabetes. You can find it at reversingprediabetes.com. The link will be up above or down below. Your first month is always available for just $1. So you can test it out with absolutely no risk. I hope to see you there on the inside. And remember, key take home from these two studies is to elevate food quality. That is your number one goal. So until next time, I'm going to sign off. I wish you peace as always. And Dr. Topher Fox signing out. Take care now.